I've loved daffodils ever since I was a little girl and today I wanted to share with you just some of the many beautiful varieties that there are. Uh, I think most people will recognise the good old yellow trumpet as a daffodil. This is what we've all grown to, to know and love over the years, the likes of Carlton or King Alfred. And that to many people is a traditional daffodil. But there are so many more to think about, classed into 13 different divisions. And these look at the form and, and the shape of those different daffodils. So following the trumpets, you have division twos, the large cups, and then you get on to division three, small cup daffodils. And this is an example of a small cup. You can see the corona in the center, really small in comparison to those outer petals. And there's actually, as well as the 13 different divisions, there is a color coding of daffodils, which um, takes the form of a number followed by a couple of colors. Now the number of this one as a small cup would be a division three, so it would be three, with a Y for the yellow of the outside petals. And then we've got a slightly orange rim, so you'd have an O and then yellow in the middle, so Y again. So that's how they're determined colour-wise as well. So uh, a division one trumpet, all yellow, would be one Y dash Y. So that's a division one trumpet with yellow petals and a yellow cup. So that's the way that, that specialists look at them colour-wise. But back to the divisions, we've got to up to three, I think. Um, so division four is the double daffodils. This is a beautiful one called Dick Wilden really really pretty and double daffodils look really more like peonies i often think uh, can be a little bit heavy on the stem some of the newer varieties uh, the older ones perhaps mary copeland irene copeland from the sort of 20s and 30s slightly smaller but as we've bred more and more they've become perhaps um, larger and heavier but they have quite sturdy stems i mean this one again here is tender beauty and such a gorgeous flower on that a really big double division four. You then go to division five, and that is the triandrous daffodils. And one that many people may recognize, if I can find it in here, is Thalia. Now Thalia, I would say, is quite a critically acclaimed daffodil. Many of the top horticulturalists will say that this is one of their favorites, really. It's very classic. I know Rachel de Tame likes it a lot. Monty Don has it in his garden. Uh, many people will really, really um, champion this particular Division 5 daffodil. Very, very dainty and good in swathes as well. Quite good in shade too, this one, but very, very pretty. And then moving on to the Division 6. Now this is the Cyclaminius with those backward petals. Can you see they sort of, they fly away almost like wings from that very pretty cup. This is a Brian Duncan. Um, introduction. can't remember which actual one this is, but it's very pretty with a pink cup. I have so many in the garden that sometimes you do lose track. But very pretty with those backwards petals and that's how you identify the Cyclaminias. And then onto the really sweet smelling ones. We have the Jonquillas, the Division 7s. And these smell so super sweet, very old fashioned really. And the Division 8s, which give you something like this this is avalanche and that fragrance is unbelievable and these are the kind of daffodils that you'll see coming over from the Isles of Scilly at Christmas time the likes of Grand Soleil d'Or or the paper whites as well all very sweet scented a little tender sometimes pop them in quite a sheltered spot I would um, but there's so many different ones to choose from from and avalanche is a really one of my favorites actually that I grow by the back door so you can benefit from that scent when you come out. You've then got the Division 9s, the Poeticus. Look at this. And this is the um, Poeticus recurvus people might recognize as the pheasant's eye. But this one is actually Actea. And often they have a quite a green center, a green eye. Really always the, the white petals and then that sort of really often red rim with that green eye. Um, but very, very pretty, the Poets Daffodils. And these are a later one, so you can get the Poets right into to May, which is really good for extending that season. I just have to mention this one. I forgot to say, this is a, a gorgeous trumpet, a Division One, but it's called 
Easter bonnet. So I thought particularly appropriate for this time of year. Really pretty with that pink on the trumpet. Now pink having been introduced around about the 1920s, Ari Backhouse was the first, first pink introduction. So relatively new in the world of daffodils, but it just proves so many different colors, not just yellow that you might think. Division 10s are the Bulbacodium, the hoop petticoats, uh, which mostly have gone over now um, where we are at this time of year, but very, very dainty. And then Division 11s, the split corona, that split cup, if you can see, they lay back onto those petals, but it's sort of split that cup. I really like these. They're quite, a, a, again, a modern introduction of breeding, but I find them really different and something to talk about. This one's exotic mystery with that split cup there as well. I think this is coming under a division 11 anyway, it has got the split cup. Um, yeah, really, really unusual. Division 12 are the miscellaneous, and then division 13 are your wild ones. So that would be your pseudo narcissus, Wordsworth's daffodils. So, so many to choose from. There are over 25,000 different cultivars and I love them all, but so much choice. And you can see why I love them. So I wish you a spring full of beautiful daffodils.